Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ya Allah ya Karim, tamunya kita sama-sama memanjatkan kesyukuran kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala kerana pada pagi ini uh, telah meng- mengumpulkan kita di dalam sesi majlis ilmu uh, bersama dengan para pemimpin uh, terkemuka uh, daripada School of Civil Engineering. Uh, ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, kita juga sama-sama memajakkan kesyukuran melalui majlis ilmu ini uh, kita dapat bersama-sama berkongsi dengan pengalaman dan apa jua yang uh, terbaik yang dapat diberikan kepada kita oleh para pemimpin uh, yang kita sanjung ini insya Allah demi memastikan School of Civil Engineering SKA, UTM akan terus maju ke hadapan Ya Dhal Jalali Wal Ikram kita juga mengucapkan kesyukuran kepada Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala kerana memberikan kita kesihatan tubuh badan dan dijauhkan kita daripada wabak yang berbahaya terutamanya wabak COVID-19 yang sedang melanda negara kita sekarang ini kita juga memohon pada Allah SWT diberi kekuatan zahir dan batin kepada kita agar dapat memberi khidmat dan sumbang bakti yang murni untuk bangsa dan negara kita insya Allah demi mencapai masyarakat yang makmur pada masa akan datang khususnya dan untuk negara kita tercinta Malaysia serta uh, Universiti Teknologi Malaysia uh, saya sebenarnya tidak keseorangan ya. saya adalah Profesor Madya Dr. Jamaluddin bin Muhammad Yatim uh, sebagai host untuk sesi ini uh, for your information uh, webinar ini akan di Uh, kendalikan uh, dua bahasa eh? bahasa Melayu dan uh, bahasa Melayu dan juga bahasa Inggeris eh? so for your information this webinar program is held to have the leaders that have once be with us in SKA and to have the sharing session of knowledge experience and guidance in building a distinguished career of figures SKA leaders to the knowledge FKA SKA has produced a total number of 11 top academic leaders of the UTM and elsewhere including the government agency and ministries among them are eight vice chancellors 15 deputy vice chancellors two people KACU and one director of ACAP should we admire perhaps an achievement and the uniqueness that is not found in any other university right and very inspiring indeed right thanks god eh? we can once again broadcast through the ska leaders webinar in the 10th series organized by the school of civil engineering ska university technology malaysia johor baru thank you for your support too for the introducing the session eh, this morning today i would like to introduce to our inspiring ska leaders dato engineer professor dr siti hamisah binti tafsir before we have our conversation in today's webinar series i would like to come yang berbahagia dato with summary of background of our role model today Datuk Engineer Profesor Dr. Hamisah Binti Tafsir born in 1961 in Selangor in academic achievement Datuk Engineer Profesor Dr. Siti Hamisah Binti Tafsir has continued her study in tertiary level in 1982 she achieved her diploma in engineering at the Institute of Technology the Mara or Majlis Amanah Rakyat Then Datuk Engineer Professor Dr Siti Hamisah received 
Bachelor of Civil Engineering at the New England College in 1984, Master of Civil Engineering at the University Lowell in 1987, and lastly, Datuk Engineer Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa successfully Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering at University of Leeds in 1994. In terms of career, Datuk Engineer Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa has a wide experience in academics and field of management. She started the career as a dean, as a civil engineer in 1984-85 at JKR. Civil Engineer, 1984-85, Public Work Department, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And uh, Civil Engineer, 1987, at Battle Duncan Associate, Burlington, Massachusetts, USA. And uh, she joined a lecturer in Civil Engineering, 1987 until 2003. She's got professor in civil engineering from 2003 to 2009 at the faculty of civil engineering utm she's also dean in august 2001 until march 2006 for diploma program studies ppd utm uh, she's then appointed as deputy Vice Chancellor from April 2006 to April 2009, Vice Chancellor Academic and Internationalization (UTM), and she appointed as Campus Director from April 2009 until July 2009, UTM International Campus, UT uh, Kuala Lumpur, and then uh, she. Uh, as a Deputy Director General of Higher Education, 2009-2013, uh, Private Higher Education Institution, Department of Higher Education, Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. Then she appointed as Deputy Director General of Higher Education from 2013 to 2017 in uh, Public Higher Education Institution, Department of Higher Education at Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia. And then she appointed as Director General of Higher Education 2017 to 2019, De Department of Higher Education at Ministry of Education Malaysia. And then she appointed as Secretary General of Ministry of Energy Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change, MASTEC, 2019 to 2020. And uh, before retirement, uh, she appointed as Secretary General of Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, 2020 until the present. Dato' Engineer Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa also made contribution in academic and engineering. She is also the board of director, Malaysia Institute of Microelectronic System, MIMOS, from two, July 2020 to July 2022. She also board member, Malaysian Technology Development Corporation, MTDC, from April 2020 to present. She also board member Malaysia Venture Capital Management Berhad, MEFCAP, March 2020 until present. She also the board member Technology Park Malaysia Corporation Senang Berhad, January 2020 until present. And then so many board uh, and also members in the industry. Uh, she also... Uh, adjunct professor of UTM from January 2020 until December 2020. And uh, she actually honorary member of the Golden Key International Owner Society, 
United States of America, 2006. So that is actually uh, the long journey uh, of Dato Engineer Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa as a leader eh, in our uh, society and also our university and uh, our national and international levels. I would like to invite Dato Engineer uh, Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa to continue this webinar session. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jamal. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Very good morning, everyone. First and foremost, Waalaikum salam, Dr. Yeah, okay. First and foremost, please allow me to thank the organizing committee for inviting me. Uh, yang berusaha, uh, Professor Dr. Nur Hazilan Muhammad No, uh, Chairman SKA, uh, Jatan Kuasa Program SKA. The chair is Professor Khalida and the team, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, terima kasih kerana mengundang saya ke program ini. Uh, I believe uh, this is the only faculty that has produced so many leaders as uh, highlighted by uh, Dr. Jamal just now. And we need to keep on continuing the tradition and the culture uh, for the future leaders of the country. Uh, so today I'm going to uh, share a bit on what I think uh, the good uh, practice of SKA that has made uh, most of us uh, the leaders uh, of the country in higher education uh, we are today. Can I have the slide, please? Thank you, Jamal. Okay, thank you. Ato. Right, uh, so I'm going to share with you uh, how S SKA, or then known as FKA, being the training ground for higher education leaders. Next, please. Uh, even though Jam uh, Dr. Jamal mentioned eight vice chancellors, I think I missed on that, so the there are eight uh, vice chancellors, two secretary general, one director general. Uh, then there are so many uh, deputy vice chancellors. We know some of them are still practicing. I had the opportunity to work with all these seven, oh, sorry, all these eight vice chancellors. So I had the opportunity to learn from them, from uh, Professor Zainai, Tansri Zul. Then we had, uh, as shown just now, Datuk Wira, uh, uh, Datuk uh, Prof. Ismail Baka, Prof. Noraini, uh, Prof. Azra'i used to be uh, my dean. Uh, then we have um, Prof. Zaini Ujang as well. Uh, as the, Initially, he was my, my dean when I was the D, uh, DVCA. Then he became my boss. Then he became my boss in uh, Minister of Higher Education. And then now we, we became uh, peers. I spent 22 years of my 33 years of service in the government in UTM. So you can understand uh, what I have gained in UTM that brought me to where I am today. Um, I have retired. Uh, my retirement date was uh, 15 of March uh, this year, but I was asked to extend it. For another six months, that was uh, September 15 recently, because of the rollout of the vaccine. For the first time, the country rolled out uh, vaccination uh, but, uh, through MOSTI instead of MOH, because uh, as we know, MOH uh, was busy with handling the pandemic. So that's how MOSTI was given the, the mandate to run that. And when I end, ended my uh, term, then it was about 80% of uh, adult population managed to get their complete vaccination. So I was happy because uh, things were winding down. Next, please. I don't think I need to share uh, further uh, on this because Dr. Jamal has, has shared with, uh, with us uh, my journey from uh, JKR Sepang to the President of Malaysia Board of Technologies uh, now. Uh, let me share with you some of the things that I still remember when I was in uh, FKA. Um, the spirit, the spirit of working together, one team, one dream. Uh, we were working as one big family and the leaders then uh, nurture us instead of, you know, some, some of the places that we work. I'm not sure those who have worked uh, outside, uh, they... 
instead of nurturing, uh, when you make a mistake, they will just scream at you, but not in FKA. I remember when uh, when I first came in, I remember Prof. Warit. This is the first time I, I learned about governance. Prof. Warit, when I joined uh, UTM, he separated me with my then uh, spouse. He said, uh, you cannot be in the same faculty, uh, same jabatan. So uh, one of you has to be in another jabatan. Then I was put under jabatan uh, di bawah pejabat dekan. That is the first governance, meaning to say there should not be any uh, any uh, self-interest. There must not be any any integrity issues. That is my first lesson. With that, uh, Professor Zaina, uh, I visited him a few years back in Kelantan. He taught me how to be very, very detailed. Uh, Dr. Jamal, I'm sure you remember how very detailed he was. Yes. Uh, uh, he asked me to write a paper. I wrote a paper and he presented it to the uh, Senate. And then something wrong with the paper and he, she, he came back. Instead of he screamed at me, uh, this is where we say in civil engineering, we are civilized. Uh, so she, uh, he pulled me aside and he said, Siti, siapa yang tulis paper ni? Mat kan yang tulis paper? So I learned, uh, okay, <laughs> next time I have to be very thorough. With Prof Azra'i, I, I remember he keep on saying, uh, you know, doing the job is only 40%, but the other 60% is about following up. And he has a Midas stage. So this is where uh, I value what I learned in FKA. With Tan Sri Zul, I remember when someone got a, a professorship, uh, the tendency is, People sometimes would say, Kenapa dia dapat? I think my my papers are much more better. And he used to tell me, Siti, we must not compare ourselves with the rest. We should look at, just focus on what we are doing and do it well. And one word that I always remember, he said, always over deliver. So during that time, all these leaders, they love to read. And when they read, they shared with us. And I remember several books. One of them is uh, broad, broad, Broadening the Horizon, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by Anthony Robbins. And the one that I hold close to my heart until this very day is Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders. And this is where all these things, I, I use it every single day. Proactive, begin uh, with end in mind, first thing first. Sometimes there are things that are important. There are things that are urgent so we have to know which one is the one and then win-win sharpen the saw and synergize uh to me this is what i learned and 4060 as i mentioned by pro azrai ukwa teamwork i used to go to the professor's house uh then the dean uh prof zainai tansri zul because they treat us like part of the family so that was what i remember and to this very date when when i led uh, Mosti and also uh, CITF, the uh, COVID-19 immunization plan. I always have this one team, one dream, one dream and one big family. And that get them to, to work together. And finally, what I learned is about nurturing. I mentioned earlier on, I know some of my friends working in other faculties, uh, when they did any mistake, they will be screamed at, but not in Faculty Kedutra and Awam. They were very, very uh, uh, gentle and really accommodating. And what is uh, very, very obvious then, uh, regardless of our background, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether some of you know me, when I joined UTM, uh, I came back from US dengan rambut, perang, menggerbang dengan skirt, but they, they, they hired me. Even though I, I I remember at that point, I did satu case. They said, oh, UTM is, is very uh, conventional. Satu case yang pasal uh, the temple tu. But when I was interviewed by Datuk Wira, and he he said, he said, uh, he said to, to us, uh, you know, you got the masters, come and, and, and join us. That's what I did. So this is these are the lesson learned uh, that I got. Uh, this is uh, one of the question asked in in the uh, in the tips yang diberikan oleh Dr Jamal. Eh? Lesson learned. Next, please. 
uh, challenges uh, Dr. Jamal did uh, and Prof. Khalida did uh, mention uh, what are the challenges. I, I'll share with you now that I've gone through so many things. I don't really find uh, there are so many challenges when I was in FKA, uh, SKA, because as I mentioned, I had leaders that, that were really nurturing. But as I uh, went to KPT, uh, it's a different ball game because it's at national level. So the, the challenges uh, is different because there are so many things that need to be, to be uh, sorted out. Then when I moved to Mastec, next please, to Mastec, uh, it's a big ministry. So it's like a big, a big elephant, large elephant. Uh, yang belakang kata ke kiri, yang ke depan kata ke kanan. How do you get all this coordinated? Uh, but we had a strong team, all wo three women engineers, as you see in this picture. Uh, strong team, a very bold leadership and very hardworking leadership. Then uh, when I joined MOSTI, uh, initially I thought I was about to retire, but we had the COVID-19 uh, that, and we had to run CITF. So in each and every level where we work, there's always challenges. And when I look at SKA, the challenges uh, may not be as crucial as uh, between life and death, but there are issues uh, sorting out that we need to do mostly uh, can be overcome through communication. So I had a great time in FKA, SKA. So those were the challenges that I've faced uh, over 33 years of working. Um, I remember we, we start doing uh, a lot of uh, changes in FKA, especially in terms of uh, lecturers doing uh, consultancy, how do we want to make sure that uh, we want them to go out there uh, to, to do all this consultancy as much as they have to come back and teach. But we had uh, great uh, leaders and lecturers that they have done well in consultancies, in research. I remember uh, Prof. Noh Azlan uh, did on earthquake. I think he has, he has achieved a level where he's the expert in the country. We have Prof. Uh, Karim, uh, he did a lot of consultancy. And in fact, I think he spent two years at the uh, industry. So these are the things that, that are important that I think uh, that we need to, to look at uh, how the tradition has to be continued. Next, please. Um, challenges at, this is uh, the most challenging part. If you ask me, uh, the the three agencies that I've worked just now, as I shown, they are not as challenging as uh, during the COVID-19 uh, immunization plan because uh, we were trying to get vaccine and this vaccine was still undergoing the clinical trial. Can you imagine buying something that you don't know how it looks, how uh, well it is, and you have to sign a contract. So those were the challenging part. Next, please. Once we got that, then we were we were faced with anti-vaccines, uh, those who do not believe in vaccination. So we came up with these stages. Stage yang pertama ialah untuk frontliners, and then uh, untuk orang-orang warga emas. But then uh, some people were asking, why can't I buy it privately? So these are nuances that we have to deal with because some people say, hey, I have the money, why can't I buy it? But we have to look at equity, vaccine equity. Bukan bermaksud orang tu ada duit, nyawa dia lebih bahagia dari makcik yang dari pendang yang duduk rumah dan uh, tanam padi. So it's about equity. So those were issues yang real issues on the ground that we need to address. Next please. I I'm sharing this so that... Uh, so that everyone understand that uh, everywhere we go, there are challenges. But as long as we are up to it and take the challenge, uh, I think you'll be doing uh, okay. And pendaftaran initially it was low, and then we the case nine in slang, or then suddenly we had a lot more yang mendaftar up to a point that people keep on asking, when am I going to get the vaccine? Next, please. Uh, this is at one point we became the the fastest in the world because we were trying to 
mitigate the, post, the positive cases of COVID-19 in Selangor, whereby uh, now it has reduced to 13,000 because we had such, capac uh, such capacity in Selangor. This is all about strategy, it's about leadership, it's about planning. We could, initially, we could have uh, said, uh, let's wait for Singapore to complete their vaccination for Indonesia, and then only we buy the vaccine. Mind you, uh, buying vaccine is not like beli KFC, beli pergi ke KFC, order dapat. Tetapi, uh, we, ordered, we ordered, Jamal, we ordered dari bulan, bulan Ogos tu kita telah mula. Ogos 2020, telah mula. Semang-semang cakap dengan uh, uh, Pfizer and all that. Then uh, bulan uh, November kita kata we should buy. And there also people say, why buy? Wait, wait. Uh, wait until uh, everybody has has done it, then we decide. If we do that, by now our cases won't be down and we still have not got the vaccination. Again, it's about leadership. Uh, that's where most of the given, yeah. We started with uh, research. Kita nak tengok uh, apakah hasil research on vaccination, but along the way, uh, we thought uh, we could do it. And that's why Mosti was uh, working with MOH to implement that. Next, please. Mm. And of course, we have to come up the PPVs. Some people were saying, kenapa tak pakai sekolah-sekolah? And then, um, ada seorang ex, uh, very senior uh, minister, contacted me. Kenapa nak buat mega PPV? Why are we wasting money and resources? We had to do mega PPV. We had to do our search capacity because all this hall, hall yang kecil-kecil ini, 600 satu hari, 200 satu hari. If we if we got all this small one, we'll be spending more money and we'll be much more slower. Uh, PWTC at one time, uh, we managed to get 23,000 a day. Can you imagine that uh, with 23,000 a day, over 10 days, 10 days, we got 230,000. Can you imagine if we go to school dengan panas, dengan takde aircon, even, even that, uh, because Malaysian, we, we have reached that level of comfort. Uh, there's no aircon, people will be making a lot of noise. But we had a challenge, it's not the, it's not perfect, but we tried to work together. We had the army, we had the bomber, we had the policemen. When we had the uh, crowd initially, the first time we faced the crowd was in PWTC because everybody were, uh, was coming very early, uh, tiga jam, empat jam. We said, no, 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 datang half an hour before that. Saya jerit tak ada siapa dengar, rela jerit tak ada siapa dengar tapi bila ATM dengan PDRM datang, dia jerit aja semua orang bergatuh. So <laughs> but we need, we need a cooperation. That's why uh, that seven effective habit that I sebutkan tadi, what I learned from FKA, uh, win-win, synergize, eh? uh, those are important uh, lesson that I got that I carry until this very day. Next please. <laughs> Uh, challenges, uh, of course, uh, saya senaraikan challenges masa mula-mula. Uh, I won't read one by one because uh, this is about uh, challenges. Next, uh, semasa implementation, buat ni salah, buat ni uh, uh, betul. But you have to understand that uh, you have to communicate. So that what we have one special unit that memang communicate, communicate. Next, please. Uh, in implementation stage. Bagaimana nak vaccinate warga, bukan warga negara yang ada dokumen, yang tak ada dokumen. And people were saying, there's one side that kata vaccinate. The one side, kenapa nak vaccinate? They are not Malaysian. But we know they're working for us. They are the one who built our economy. So these these are challenges. Next please. Uh, wrapping up, sekarang kita dah uh, tutup PPV, sekarang orang marah pula, kenapa nak tutup PPV? Kita, siapa lagi yang kita nak jab dah tak ada. So, uh, making that understand, uh, uh, understandable and along the way, uh, there's change of government, if you remember, and during the change of government, uh, there are people who want to write uh, and take uh, CITF uh, for mostly because it has been a successful one. There were states yang uh, nak pinjam vaksin, kemudian nak pulang vaksin, uh, different vaccine, nak kita tulis surat to the point uh, we, that was crisis management for me which I learned a valuable lesson initially uh, they advised me, don't say anything, don't issue any statement in the newspaper but I felt as a leader uh, kalau kena tembak, biar saya kena tembak dulu so I issued two statements uh, during that time uh, 
and things come down. Yeah. Next please. Uh, prinsip utama yang untuk membina kejaya cemerlang di UTM, I believe again uh, doing the right thing. Uh, we must always check our compass, uh, the value, the value that we want to bring in. Uh, for us, to me, that is important because uh, if we are doing something that 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 is not right, I think at the end of the day it will bite us. That is how I look at it. Um, sometimes we have to tell our bosses the thing that we think is not right. But if the bosses still want to do it, uh, you have done your part. Sometimes I, I realize young, uh, passionate uh, officers, uh, they don't agree with the bosses. If the bosses doesn't do as he or she advised the bosses, they will trust uh, lah, merajo. I think uh, we have to be very clear. We are doing our job. We must do the right thing. If the bosses do not listen, uh, then we just have to move on. Nyatakan tips yang sangat penting yang perlu ada dalam diri seseorang mencapai kejayaan. Uh, I would say willing to work very hard. Uh, when we did the vaccination, uh, CITF, since I was the Secretary General of Mosti, uh, our meeting sometimes started at 10 o'clock uh, uh, in the uh, at night and ended uh, sampai pukul 12 tengah. But after that, we couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah, so, willingness to work hard and Instead of some people think that uh, if you stay in the office sampai ke 10 malam, then you work hard. Actually, it's not. Uh, when I was working in in uh, US as an engineer, they each uh, hour that I work on, they will they will take note of that. Every Friday, I have to report my time sheet, how many hours I spend on this project, project B, project C. So it's not number of hours. It's about getting the things done and uh, impactful as well sense of purpose uh, with the vaccination the sense of purpose we must do it as soon as possible uh, to as many as possible and uh, this is about saving life passionate uh, and enjoy what you are doing and you need clarity i believe in this uh, if you enjoy what you are doing you are going to have fun that is the most important thing even though you have to work until 10 o'clock there are times but you are clear with uh, your your concern that you are doing this uh, for the benefit of the good. And being leaders, it is not about us. It is about the people that we serve. That is what we need to keep on thinking. I, This is my belief, uh, Dr. Jamal. Eh? This is how yeah. I look at it. Apakah pandangan uh, terhadap erti sebuah kejayaan? Uh, mm. Here to me, it is very, very subjective. Uh, maybe uh, 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 an, an engineer with a degree or master's PhD decided to stay home to look after the children. Some people think that is not uh, kejayaan. To me, it's satu kejayaan. Because they akan mendidik anak dia. Yeah? So, it is satu kejayaan. Uh, if someone decided to just uh, being, uh, doing something that they are comfortable with, and at the end of the day, is the measure of your life. What is it that you want to be remembered? Uh, if you are risk taker like me, or someone who cannot sit still for for a few years, I always change job every three, four years because I, I cannot do things over and over again. That is what I, I like. So you have to decide. And we want to know, we want to identify what is it that you want in life. So I'm, I'm to me, it's very subjective, Dr. Jamal. Next yeah. Uh, I learned leaders, they are willing to roll out, roll up uh, their, their sleep. And mm -hmm. as you see, on the left left hand side, uh, Dr. Adaham, he went uh, to the ground to jab because he enjoyed doing it. And mm -hmm. uh, the middle picture, I was explaining explaining to Tan Sri KSN. He came down. He came down to see how are the penjawa awam because we have uh, a few thousands of penjawa awam that that uh, willingly to serve uh, the PPV, the one that I mentioned earlier on, two thousand plus. And on the last page. Uh, on the first day, we had our PPV, PWTC, uh, we had then started like 6,000 or so. Uh, some of the volunteers uh, took time off to have lunch because it's a long hour. Sometimes they have to stay sampai pukul 11 malam. And there were people queuing up. And YBKJ sat down and two less one by one. <laughs> so that's what it takes to be leaders. Uh, kalau kena tembak, kita lah yang kena tembak dahulu. 
but you must be willing to work hard. That is what it takes to me. Next, please. Kepimpinan yang baik dan cemerlang, uh, ya ini apa komen mengenai ungkapan ini dan bagaimana ia boleh dicapai. Again, uh, we have to identify uh, what type of leadership you want to bring to the team. Uh, I was exposed to nurturing culture in SKA. Nurture meaning to say kalau tak betul, tunjukkan. Not marah-marah. Uh, eh? uh, sebab saya rasa that was shown by the leaders that I work with, uh, the eight uh, vice chancellors. They will talk to us nicely and they were very, very passionate. Kadang-kadang kita tak uh, tak faham, dia bantu. Eh? Leadership is not about us. This is what I said earlier on. It is about the people that we serve. At the end of the day, we want to know, uh, we should know what is it that we want people to to know about us, Yeah, to appreciate us. Uh, is it about, you know, you are the kuasa ke? Atau you are helping them? To me, jangan ada budaya... Uh, ketam dalam baldi. We have to make sure that when we are up there, we need to pull those at the bottom. But it has to be people who are good lah. Kalau the uh, lobby saja saya tak setuju. Tapi if they are good, uh, I think this is where we need to to help them. Apakah perkara yang tidak boleh dilakukan oleh seorang pemimpin yang cemerlang? Uh, putting out oneself before the rest. Seperti saya sebutkan tadi. It is putting uh, your team and the people that you serve. I give you one example. During the vaccination, we know fasa pertama adalah frontliners. Fasa kedua ialah senior citizen. Fasa ketiga, those below 60. Uh, until, until uh, I think bulan July or June, uh, most of us uh, in CITF, we didn't get our vaccination. And our minister's wife, uh, I think she has to go through the, uh, you know, remember the AZ and all that. So uh, when the bosses are doing this, they, they practice what they preach. Uh, you pun akan ikut. Eh? Jadi uh, instead of pushing uh, our those that we know uh, or our family members, uh, we need to serve the people yang need it. Misalnya senior citizen in this case dalam vaccination those young above 60. So those are the things, this is value-based uh, leadership, saya rasa, yang mana it has to be uh, part of us. Saya bila melihat kes MACC, yang mana beberapa pegawai terlibat dalam kes uh, wang yang lesap baru-baru ini, saya rasa macam sedih sangat. Because uh, as a country, a middle uh, income country uh, to become a developed nation, we have to do away with such uh, practices. And I hope the future generation, especially those uh, below 40s uh, or below 45, will be able to take us to the next level. Yeah. Next, please. Beberapa slide untuk mengulas dengan lebih mendalam prinsip dalam kepimpinan yang mungkin boleh disertai dengan contoh pengalaman. Next, please. Uh, saya merasakan leadership is very very important and again saya sebutkan sense of purpose value base uh, what is it that we want to do strong and bold sometimes you have to make decision macam uh, bila Mosti was given the mandate we took it up and we try to do it as good as we want uh, governance governance is important because without governance integrity practices uh, those will go haywire. So we had a lot of SOPs uh, in CITF. Clarity, what is it that we want to do? What is it that we want to achieve? The mostly we have this Milan F, uh, Budaya Kerja. Uh, yang sini, uh, it's about very fast. It's about uh, doing the right thing. So all this um, yang saya bawa sebenarnya banyak juga daripada SKA. And along the way, I, I combine them. Yeah? Uh, working together as one team. One team, one dream is important. Sebab saya, saya masih ingat lagi hari keluarga di SKA. Uh, then that's how I, I got to know uh, the wives of our deans then. Yeah, and we, they, the leaders were very, very 
uh, nurturing and encouraging. Next, please. Uh, teamwork is important to me. Uh, this is a thing that I always uh, share with many people. If you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together because you need your your teams, your colleagues to work with you. Uh, right job, uh, right person for the right job. Uh, sometimes uh, we think that they are good in certain area. We thought that they are good in all the areas. So this is something that I realized uh, is not true. Next week. What I learned, uh, leadership, uh, normal times and leadership in time of crisis are not the same. Because some people think that uh, leadership in crisis is the same as normal leadership. For leadership in, in crisis, uh, we need to, to move fast. Yeah? Uh, of course, inclusive and equity, seperti saya sebutkan tadi, regardless of the background of a person. Yeah? Uh, we should not be only uh, appointing or recruiting people of certain affiliation. Um, and leaders have to make decision, and the decision may not be precise. Uh, during normal time, we can take our time and go through and very detailed, but during crisis, um, we have to go a speed over precision. So these are differences that I, I find. And communication, normally we'll have our unique communication as usual, but this is where communication is, is totally different ball game because we need to cascade. Can you imagine uh, the policy or the SOP that we, we have endorsed at CITF Kebangsaan not being uh, implemented di CITF bahagian. Misalnya, uh, untuk pelajar-pelajar IPT uh, boleh walk in. Tetapi bila pelajar uh, IPT tersebut, umur dia bawah 17 tahun, they said no, tak boleh. So we had to call them, tell them, look, uh, 17 tahun, tahun ni 18 tahun, boleh bagi vaccination. So again, this is where the communication get it done. Uh, Sometimes kita suka debate, debate, uh, meeting sampai tiga jam, empat jam, debate benda yang sama, in the end tak, tak ada conclusion uh, to to us, to me, uh, in CITF, uh, our meeting even yang dipengusikan oleh uh, uh, Menteri bersama seratus lebih uh, CITF negeri, it is between one hour to one and a half. Never go beyond that. But having said that, the preparation before that, meaning to say uh, my role then masa KSU tu, I will screen through each and every one of the paper and make sure the paper is almost pe perfect, only it's being presented. Meaning to say we save a lot of time there. So uh, again, uh, outcome-based, uh, we need to make sure that it's outcome-based. Yeah? Uh, get, kalau tidak, is the process, which is not what we want. Next, please. Next, please. Right, these are some of the pictures. Uh, there were time uh, we went, we had this uh, PPV, the KLCC, and they gave us the uh, tingkat tiga, tinggi kena naik. And I went there, saya tengok, oh, dah siap. Tapi the next day uh, is supposed to be the day of the vaccination. Saya nak suruh diorang uh, turunkan the ground floor, saya tak sampai hati sebab our officers dah work on it for one week. And then my minister, then my BKJ came in, Oh, Datuk, yang ni tak boleh. Yang ni macam mana warga emas nak naik this tinggi. And then we we decided to bring it down on the ground floor. Can you imagine that night uh, our officers, the military, uh, then the police, uh, rela, uh, those sukarelawan, they didn't sleep. Uh, in fact, Mak Saleh yang dalam tu pun ada tu. Uh, dia tolong kita untuk vaccinate uh, di bawah on the ground floor. That was uh, why uh, the PPV was on the ground floor of uh, KLCC. Next please. Menghadapi cabaran masa ini, soalan yang diberikan, nasihat saya rasa uh, number one, we have to have sense of purpose, enjoy what we are doing, Yeah, uh, sense of gratitude, always be grateful. Uh, people before us have sacrificed a lot. Saya ingat masa saya masuk, saya nak buat PhD, they were our seniors yang tak dapat buat PhD because they have to stay on untuk mengajar 
di SKA. I always remember those people, uh, Kak Nab, uh, uh, Puan Fatima. Those were the people who serve uh, the the faculty. Uh, kejayaan kita bukan kejayaan seorang. Kejayaan ini adalah kejayaan atas orang-orang yang sebelum kita yang banyak membantu kita. Eh. Again, it's not about us, it's about the people that we serve. Next please. Right, menghadapi cabaran masa kini untuk menjadikan uh, sebagai SKA sebagai uh, subjek pada ranking nombor satu di Malaysia, saya rasa semua orang cuba memperbaiki keadaan mereka. I'm sure other universities, Ampton, RU. So what is important, saya rasa leadership uh, di SKA is to look beyond the horizon. When you look beyond the horizon, orang tak nampak lagi. And this is where you need to have scenario planning. You need to have what if uh, SKA do this? What is the impact? What is, so you have, I think uh, there are three, four scenarios that we need to look and do a what if. From there, then we know which path that we need to do. To Inclusiveness and diversity. Uh, this is important sebab mata kita kat depan saja. We need people to to tell us what's happening on the left, on the right, kat depan. Kat, belak- kat depan kita nampak di belakang dan di atas. That's why you need diversity. Uh, and what really matters in this case? What is it that is really important? Probably for young universities, ranking is not important because they want to get uh, their program right, the quality assurance la- right. But for universities like UTM, uh, the pioneer civil engineering uh, faculty, I believe uh, it should be number one for many, many years to come because of the quality of programs, of the the talents in the faculty that have built the faculty to become where it is. Next week. Apakah yang perlu dilakukan oleh seorang pemimpin atau seorang ilmuwan perlu supaya tidak ketinggalan dengan kembangan zaman? Uh, dari bidang kejuteraan. Saya rasa uh, SKA, I'm sure it is now. Sebab when I was in FKA, it was a learning organization. Uh, if you notice, I put a lot of books because those leaders during my time, they influenced me to read a lot of books. Not only buku kejuteraan awam, buku kejuteraan awam tu memang they have a uh, discourse dan macam-macam lagi. And the equipments that they bought pun... Uh, Memang advance. Uh, Baru-baru ini somebody was talking to me about uh, indestructive uh, uh, gadget, and I was saying I learned that when I was in in FKA 1990s. So meaning to say FKA has to be ahead. The FKA has to be the one that chart the path. So in this case, learning organization realizing the potential that we have. Bagaimana pula dengan ranking? Ranking is not everything. But for a faculty like FKA, I think it is necessary. We must not be obsessed with it. But it is the outcome of, of excellent organization. I think SKA didn't plan to be in the rank. But along the way, people people find that yeah, people find that these are an excellent uh, organization. I remember uh, we started to uh, uh, to to offer programs under space. Then Prof. Ismail Baka was the the pengarah for space. And I joined him. I remember when we first uh, started, uh, uh, for the whole, we offered for the whole day or Saturday, and people were writing uh, letters saying, apalah Siti ni buat program the whole day, mana lah. But Prof. Ismail was supportive of me. And the uh, program space became hype and lepas tu uh, orang-orang lain pun do, buat program tersebut. So these are leaders that see beyond the horizon. Eh? Uh, but for for me, I always think that we need to reflect what did we do right, what did we do wrong and even if it's wrong, it's not a mistake, it's just a feedback and we can continue to improve. Next please. Datuk Ismail Bakar pun join ni Datuk. Oh iya ke? Alright, alright. Thank you, thank you. Dan saya uh, dimaklumkan uh, Dr. Muhammad Ismail sebagai seorang pesara 10-50 right. Seterusnya, ramai staff akademik yang tidak berminat menjadi seorang pemimpin organisasi. Bagaimana mengubah sikap mereka? I didn't plan to be a leader. 
I I remember the first job uh, among some, masa saya balik dari US itu uh, Tan Sri Zul buat satu program national level uh, conference di masa tu library yang lama and he, he said okay you you jaga urus dia untuk jaga makan so those were I still remember to this very day and uh, Prof Karim buat satu program di Melaka oh you became the MC I didn't plan to become uh, a leader I didn't know uh, what it takes to be a leader but the leaders in FKA before has given me opportunities then uh, so to me I believe leadership cannot be forced upon anybody I believe SKA has uh, SKA now has to provide opportunities kalau ada program Samden program yang di luar luar sana but at the same time I believe academics too must play their role Kalau katalah uh, bosses, they can kata, okay Jamal you buat ni. I don't think uh, we should say, oh saya tak boleh lah, saya tak mau, tak mau. I think our job is to support our leaders, regardless. Yeah? I had leaders, uh, menteri-menteri dari dari pelbagai pelbagai parti. Yeah? So can you imagine? But uh, the most important thing, we must do the right thing. So let them choose, but uh, you can say I am an unplanned leader lah kot eh. Saya never, uh, I don't think anybody, kalau you ask all the VCs, uh, Prof Zainai semua tu, if you ask, uh, they plan to be leaders. I don't think so. But we are doing what is, we felt our responsibility. So, kalau, kalau uh, academics tanya saya, for me, uh, kalau you are given a task, please go ahead and do it well. Seperti uh, saya punya ex-boss dulu kata, uh, over deliver. Otherwise, uh, kalau kita tak even try to go out there buat uh, practical training, we run a risk as uh, seen as armchair critic and not part of the nation development. Next, please. Tidak dapat nafikan bahawa salah satu perkara yang paling sukar untuk dilakukan adalah mengubah minda staff dalam sesebuah organisasi. I I agree with you on that totally. But before we, we say uh, we need to change uh, the MINDA, we need to get them involved in the change. If we want to go from A to B, get them to be part of those that plan from A to B. So create plan for employee success. Maksudnya, if they go along, what is it that uh, they will be uh, given opportunities, uh, how to monitor the progress, aligning to personal goals, I, I was fortunate because I was I was given this training by senior professors in SKA before. Like I said, seek first to understand and then be understood and make them feel a sense of pride. Uh, macam very proud to be uh, part of SKA because we had uh, eight vice chancellors uh, in, in this uh, country from SKA. We need external uh, leadership program that they have to, to be part and teamwork. Next, please. Pesanan saya kepada generasi masa kini dan akan datang, apakah takeaway bagi saya, uh, we must not be afraid to take a risk. I know some people felt like, oh, what if, kalau, I buat, kalau saya pergi ke industri, what if uh, saya tak boleh buat? Uh, I think until and unless we go there, we don't know what's happening. So to me, failure is everyday uh, thing. Failure is a feedback. And the feedback is the breakfast of the champions. So if you... Saya beri satu example. Uh, kita minta semua uh, warga negara bukan... Uh, bukan warga negara untuk mendaftar bawah PICAS di bawah MITI supaya mereka boleh, bosses mereka boleh bayar dan mereka boleh dapat vaccination. So we did our ramp up uh, di Selangor sampai 114% uh, uh, yang dah dapat jab. So kami rasa oh maksud dia sekarang we can do walk in sebab tak tak ramai orang dah. Semua dah vaccinate. Rupanya we found out ramai yang kami vaccinate tu bas-bas daripada MUA yang datang. Jadi yang di dalam Selangor ni ada ramai dia tak vaccinate. But we didn't find out that. So kita pun kata okay walk in. Bila walk in uh, warga negara uh, relax je lah tak ramai kan. Tapi bila walk in bukan warga negara you know what happened di 
uh, Stadium Bukit Jalil And it went viral Masa tu government tak ada Dan saya yang Yang dimandatkan untuk Melaksanakan So that was a feedback Feedback maksud dia ramai lagi tak vaccinate After a few days Saya decide uh, Saya kata Stop the walk in Now get them to register It is not a, an easy decision Some people masa tu lah peluang Nak, nak mengata si ITM macam-macam lah kan Biasalah kan Memang memang tak nak vaksin Bila kena macam ni lagi lah But I To me is a feedback So I Saya punya pecaturan tadi silap lah maksud dia Anggaran dah 114% tu ingatkan semua orang Di Selangor Rupanya kebanyakan datang dari luar sana So kita pun panggil polis stop Di uh, Di apa uh, Tol-tol tu So stop bus-bus daripada tu Then we got seen it And now they are starting to uh, Buat uh, walk in Tapi dah tak ramai lah So If if we want to talk about failure uh, It should not be seen as failure yeah? It is a feedback Next please Uh, my, saya rasa this is my final slide uh, In pursuit of work and life balance Bagi saya uh, Success is depending on What you define success But if you are given the chance And if one is asked to lead I think one need to lead Because Saya rasa because People see you as a leader That's why they ask you to lead Nobody will ask someone who they think uh, the thing will fail, right? Uh, priority, what is our priority in our life? Uh, humility and sensibility. Humility and sensibility ini saya belajar masa di SKA juga. Masa tu uh, we had uh, the second bridge to Singapore. And we had one program we organized a diploma uh, in project management, and the students were placed in uh, in the on site, and then they work with the Japanese and all that. And the lens tanah tanah di uh, apa rumah kedai apa tiga pintu semua tu dijual. Hmm. Used to be seorang makcik who came to sapu di FKAA tu di level uh, C C 09. Saya pun kadang uh, tengok dia And then for longest time dia tak ada Kemudian dia datang balik Saya tanya Makcik buat apa tak ada She said oh uh, Kerajaan beli tanah saya So she became a millionaire I said Makcik ni millionaire Siapa sampah di, uh, di FKA C09 Habis makcik buat apa datang kerja Saya duduk rumah tak boleh Sakit badan Saya kena kerja juga Can you imagine a millionaire Uh, working jadi penyapu that was i learned about humility and sensibility and i said abi duit mak cik buat apa saya simpanlah bagi anak sana sikit-sikit can you imagine uh, i i think i'm i'm blessed uh, because i met these people that changed my life yeah? communication and good listener sometimes uh, is easy to to want people to listen to our story but actually other people want them want us to listen to their story so a good leader must must listen yeah? so there's two uh, you have to identify your leadership style so it's different for me raise your words not voice it is rain that grow the grows the flowers uh, not the thunder saya rasa yang ini ada what i describe what fka when i was a lecturer before Uh, know your priorities. Life is like juggling five balls. Work, family, health, friends and integrity. Work is rubber ball. If you drop, it bounce back. But the rest, it will not bounce back. And my final slide, please. Next, please. Right. Thanks. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I must thank all, all the leaders. Uh, what I probably I forgot to share. One of the slides that I, I shared was about uh, the books that I read and these books uh, when I read um, it was influenced from the leaders before me the eight leaders if I may say that them again Prof Zainal Tan Sri Zul Prof Ismail Bakar uh, Datuk Wira uh, Prof Azrai 
uh, of course, uh, here my colleagues, uh, Prof. Uh, Wahid, Prof. Prof. Zaini, and also Prof. Noraini. They has they have helped me uh, in coloring the journey of my life. Thank you all. I'm now open for any questions. Terima kasih, Dato. This is very long journey sharing by Dato. Banyak soalan dalam kepala saya dah terjawab lah Dato. <laughs> <laughs> saya dah cuba senarai soalan semua dah terjawab dah ya. Eh? Ha. Uh, terima kasih banyak Dato dan uh, very fruitful uh, sharing. Uh, saya uh, nak maklumkan bahawa uh, kepada newcomers lah eh bahawa ini merupakan sesi webinar right siri yang ke-10 uh, yang mana kita telah menjemput uh, Datuk IR Professor Dr Siti Hamizah binti Tafsir dan uh, saya adalah Profesor Madia Dr Jamaluddin Muhammad Yatim uh, host bagi uh, sesi pada hari ini Uh, untuk makluman uh, semua, kita sehingga pukul 10.54 pagi, audien kita ada 147. Jadi saya kira dah cecah lebih pada 150 sekarang ni. Yeah? Uh, jadi terima kasih dan uh, selamat datang kepada uh, especially newcomers. Eh? Dan ada bersama kita, saya dimaklumkan uh, Datuk Semai Bakat. Selamat datang Datuk. Dan selamat main program ni. <laughs> Juga beberapa pesara. <laughs> beberapa pesara termasuk uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Ismail pun ada sama dengan kita pada hari ni. <laughs> Dah pesara masih aktif ni. Eh? Uh, masih merindui SKA, FKA kita. Eh? Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih eh, kepada apa nama yang uh, join uh, uh, semua eh? uh, yang uh, apa, join kita punya sesi pada hari ini uh, cuma ada beberapa soalan uh, Datuk boleh Datuk ya ada soalan boleh, boleh, dihantar. Boleh, boleh. Uh, dihantar dekat chatting saya ni <laughs> ok, uh, okay. Uh, satu soalan daripada Dr. Afiqah tapi Dr. Afiqah uh, saya ingat uh, beberapa uh, soalan ini menyentuh tentang prinsip uh, yang Datuk pegang lah di dalam merancang karier. Tapi tak tahulah bila saya tengok slide Datuk tadi banyak jawapan dah keluar kat situ. <laughs> uh, prinsip, eh, bertanya tentang prinsip yang Datuk pegang eh, di dalam merancang karier. Iyalah. Uh, terutama uh, kita ada beberapa ramai juga pensyarah baru, pensyarah muda ya, di SKA kita ini. Uh, terutamanya Mungkin uh, di seluruh Malaysia sekarang ni ada yang menonton, ada yang melihat uh, live ini. Uh, dia nak tahu apakah prinsip yang dipegang oleh Datuk di dalam merancang karier. Uh, merancang karier tu Datuk. Uh, mungkin ada something lah untuk mereka lah eh, especially. <laughs> um, terima kasih uh, Yama. When I was uh, a lecturer, uh, again uh, I, I mentioned earlier on, Uh, I try the best that I I can try to understand. This is where uh, the uh, empathy sometimes try to understand what is it that your boss want it done. Yeah, sebab kadang-kadang the boss has to answer to the other boss. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is the EQ. Uh, EQ yang mana uh, sebab tu saya sebutkan. The leaders that I I worked for before, they read a lot, and I learn about things that are not are not uh, related to civil engineering. Civil uh, engineering is one part of it, but we have the other part, which is about uh, PR, is about uh, our relation with others. But you don't want to be a yes person, but you need to give your your ideas. Yeah? But cara untuk menyampaikan, uh, this is where I learn. Uh, kalau kadang-kadang kita kata uh, dua campur dua, empat. People can de- deliver it in many ways. Jadi dalam rancang uh, your career, to me, you have to have clarity. What is it that you want? Do you want to be a professor? If you are, If you want to be a professor, you have to start chatting. 
for professor berapa kertas kerja berapa berapa uh, student PhD you list it down that's why semasa saya di NCA tu we came up with uh, very clear you boleh key in and you boleh tahu sama ada you made it or, thought, or not from there you you start building it up and once you got it katalah dia nak 10 paper you buat 10 paper that is not enough meaning to say you have to have buffer kita pun kalau kita buat cost uh, costing dalam construction kan kita ada extra buffer 30% 40% then try to understand what is needed by the organization that we are serving i understood i was uh, hired by uh, fka then because masa tu kita baru nak membina fka dan lecturers were sent for masters but i came back with masters so meaning that i learned oh uh, if i am one one step extra than what is required then i should be okay so it is about planning i believe in planning in fact uh, most of my students uh, dalam kejuruteraan awam bila saya mengajar i always selitkan you must plan at the age of 30 what do you want you want to get married by then you have a car by the age of uh, 45 what do you want by the age of 60 when you get your duit pension what do you want to do with duit pension do you want to give away part of it so that people can have, have access to things in life basic things in life uh, even though maybe you're 30 years old but you should think ahead that's why uh, being a leader you have to see beyond the horizon who is the source of inspiration i have many mentors seperti saya sebutkan Tan Sri Zul, uh, Prof Zainai, Dr Ismail Baka, then I have uh, Prof Azrai. Sampai sekarang kadang-kadang saya cari Prof Azrai. Kadang-kadang. <laughs> Prof, ni 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 ni. And he has been very kind. He always answered. And then sebab tu kalau dia nak datang jumpa saya dekat Mosti tu sebagai KSU saya cakap dengan PA, bagi dia waktu. PA kata tak sempat, tak sempat. Bagi dia waktu. Saya punya sifu tu. And even now, I still uh, collaborate dengan beliau. We should be grateful and recognize uh, masa kita uh, nak naik tu tak ramai orang bersama kita. Tetapi bila kita di atas, ramai bersama kita. So don't forget those people that have helped you. Your success is not yours alone. Rezeki you pun bukan your rezeki. Actually, rezeki orang-orang lain. My my pandangan. Terima kasih. Okay. Oh, terima kasih, Datuk. Untuk makluman, eh. Untuk makluman, eh. Uh... Uh, Datuk merupakan supervisor PhD saya yeah? pada <laughs> tahun 1998 hingga 2002 bersama dengan uh, Profesor Maritus uh, Dr. Zainai Muhammad dulu yeah? uh, saya ada pengalaman yang panjang dengan Datuk oh iya ke? Uh, <laughs> dan <Very> selama <laughs> selama saya menjadi Uh, pelajar bimbingan Datuk dulu ketika buat PhD saya, apa yang saya dapat rasakan adalah saya tak rasa uh, saya terpinggir ah, begitu, jadi apa selalu yang Datuk uh, cuba lakukan kepada saya adalah dia mencari sesuatu apa yang boleh memudahkan saya eh? dia rajin cari duit saya ikut <laughs> dan itulah dia seorang leader eh? Pada padahal zaman tu susah cari duit Datuk ya eh? <laughs> Untuk buat research eh? Zaman tu susah nak cari duit untuk buat research Kena meeting berapa puluh kali Tak tahulah baru dapat ya. Eh? Jadi cuba bayangkan eh? Pentingnya seorang leader Di mana dia menjaga Subordinatenya, maknanya orang di bawah tanggungjawab dia Dan Datuk adalah Seorang yang uh, Achieve that Criteria eh? sebagai leader And then uh, Untuk makluman juga Haa uh, Uh, saya, selepas saya tamat PhD saya tahun 2002 dulu yeah. uh, Maka selepas daripada itu Datuk uh, berjalan laju <laughs> Di dalam kerjanya yeah. Sehinggalah uh, at the end dia uh, pension sebagai KSU yeah. Mesti Alhamdulillah saya sentiasa mendoakan Datuk Datuk adalah sifu saya <laughs> yeah. Baik, uh, Datuk uh, ada lagi soalan Datuk? Sekejap ya yeah. Saya tolong bacakan ni daripada audien ni. Eh. So saya buka uh, soal uh, soalan kepada audien lah eh. uh, dan saya akan bacakanlah soalannya. Eh. 
Okey, di sini saya bacakan uh, daripada Dr. Nadia. Eh? Dr. Nadia Mazlan. Okey, dia kata, dia datuk, if a man is outspoken, he is considered as opportunated. If a woman is outspoken, she is throwing tantrum or bossy. How to deal with gender bias? <laughs> Wah, ini uh, Datuk kena jawab ni. <laughs> yeah, I learned from Professor Tajuddin Ninggal. Uh, he was uh. the TNC HEP uh, UTM and he was then the president of counselors in Malaysia. I had one incident. Uh, saya memang masa tu Professor Madia ni saya tak bagi orang tak ada PhD. <laughs> Ada one particular person tu, iya, iya, iya bertahun-tahun uh, tapi masa tu VC decided nak bagi juga. Saya kena mengalah lah. So, dia pun dapat. Uh, one week later, saya masa tu nak introduce internationalization kepada uh, UTM. Masa tu saya nak uh, move into uh, teaching in English bagi yang pelajar antarabangsa. Masa tu Masa tu dia uh, dia cakap something to the point people boo me. Eh, kayak, then I said probably because I'm a woman, eh, orang boo saya. But when I spoke to Prof Tajuddin uh, Ninggal, he said, uh, Prof, you can control what you want to say and how you want to think, but you cannot control people, other people, perception of you. As long as if you are opinionated, you are opinionated dalam cara yang yang uh, yang objektif. Opinionated bukannya setiap kali orang cakap kita cakap. So, kita sampai buka opinionated itu macam uh, itu macam uh, annoying. As long as you know, sometimes you don't have to speak too many times and too often, but make your point. And if they think you are bossy, you are uh, ni, let them think. As long as when you check your compass, seperti saya tunjukkan tadi buku tadi, True North, if you have time, read uh, Nadia, read that book, True North. As long as you know dalam the whole meeting, you tak cakap, you cuma cakap sekali saja and you bagi your opinion and your opinion memang uh, uh, spot on, don't care about the rest. Uh, my advice and talking about uh, gender bias if you think about it uh, you will get that all the time but if you think about well even you know uh, even men to do this uh, forget about it we have to know when it is dah melepasi batas when it became sexual harassment and all that uh, that i think you need to to report but uh, this is the culture And I was lucky. I was telling uh, Prof Kalida today as well. In FKA that I used to to work uh, in the 90s, they appointed Prof Hadibah Ismail as the Ketua Jabatan. During that time, can you imagine? And masa saya student dulu, lima orang aja uh, ladies dalam hundred uh, of. Uh, class of all men. Nak masuk lecture hall tu teka-teka-teka sebab the, the lecture hall tu kan boys duduk kat belakang tu duduk tengok kita masuk je wait wait wait. But uh, after some time you get used to it and the and then as long as you know how to work well with the, the rest of the people. It's not only gender, sometimes it's uh, different races and to me diversity is important. So Nadia keep on, Jayo. <laughs> Dr. Nadia uh, memang dia energetik orangnya tu. <laughs> good, 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 good. good. I, I'm more than happy uh, if you want to ask me for anything. I, I'm more than happy, Nadia. Uh, one team, one dream. Itu satu uh, ungkapan yang Datuk ada sebut tadi. One team, one dream. Eh? Okay, this is, uh, I think, is very good uh, principle. Okay, di dalam uh, apa nama leadership lah ya eh, yang kita hmm. boleh ambil sebagai panduan lah. Eh. Dr. Marina Aida ada tanya ni lah tu. Iya. Yeah. Dr. Marina Aida ada bertanya ni. Uh, okay dia beri salam pada tu. Assalamualaikum lah tu. Uh, terima yeah. kasih lah tu. Eh. Apakah pandangan datuk berkenaan kepimpinan akademik untuk generasi atau masa sekarang? 
adakah perlu pendekatan baru atau yang lama masih lagi relevan? Terima kasih Datuk. There are things that we need to uh, to probably uh, look at differently because in this connected world uh, during pandemic unprecedented time high tech low touch so as a leader you must be well versed in IT in all these things uh, sebab kalau tidak if you teach guna cara yang lama yeah. uh, I think you are not relevant so in your case I think you need to look at what the future generation will um, require sebab saya rasa the future generation umur lima tahun dah pandai pakai iPad and if we are teaching menggunakan slide macam saya guna slide tadi I think it will not be relevant hmm. masa saya dulu dia pakai uh, card tu kalau pakai komputer pakai card tu kan tek, tek, tek. <laughs> but now I think it's different That is on the technology side. You have to be relevant and you have to mendekati digital native ni, pelajar-pelajar ni. Ask them. Uh, you want to to create your lecture note, ask them. What is your opinion? Uh, how can I improve? Sometimes it's okay to learn from students. We lecturers do not know everything. Eh? Mm. So that's why humility must be there. Put our ego in the pocket. That is one. Yeah. But on the other side, leadership, humanity must be there. So the other side of leadership is still relevant. Meaning to say, uh, you must, uh, you must, you must have high empathy. Kadang-kadang saya ada PA, my PA ada anak tiga orang. So when I went up to become, I was promoted to become the director general of higher education. My PA cakap dengan saya, Datuk, saya ni ada anak. Nanti saya nak kena hantar anak pergi sekolah. Nanti saya balik pukul lima. I know she's a good, she's a good worker. I didn't want to lose her. I said to her, um, you continue to work for me, but I have to adjust. If I come early, she said, I can come at 8.30. Okay. But you must promise me that you will answer my my text at any time of the day. And I said, mm. you don't have to be there for me all the time. And for the past, I don't know, uh, three, five years, she's with me. And empathy is very important. Even though we say technology, but empathy, being human. Because mm. at the end of the day, These people is part of your family already. You work with them five years. Anak dia sakit. I, I, to me, yeah, you sort out your kerja-kerja rumah tu dulu, then you come back. Uh, empathy is important. Again, as leaders, we must have vision. Ya tu penting. Sebab dia, kalau kita leaders, uh, our pengikut nak tanya, pergi mana Datuk? Ha? Kiri kanan tak tahu? No. You must know. Sebelum dia ni, you dah tahu kat mana you nak bawa dia. Ke kiri, ke kanan. That's why leaders must see beyond the horizon. Mesti melihat lebih ke depan dia orang lain. Hmm. Kalau tidak, and the other thing, I always look at buat perkara yang impactful. Maksud yeah. dia, don't spend too much time. Kita engineers kan? Engineers ni, uh, look at the outcome. I always tell my staff, eh? uh, I said to them, Uh, I said to them, uh, I don't care how you do it, but I want it tomorrow, kata. Dia cari jalan sendiri, empower them. As leaders, you must empower them. Let them think, think. Jangan, jangan kita limit. Our job as leaders is to facilitate. Maksud dia, dia kata, uh, I, I take one example, Arham. Prof Arham lah kan. Uh, he work uh, for us in JPT. Dia kata, Datuk saya nak buat ni. Okay, Arham, what do you need? I need so, so, so. Okay, I'll give you this. But you must capai as, ni lah. So uh, as leaders, we must empower, we must help our leaders, our uh, staff to achieve what they, they want to achieve. And your job is to make sure that uh, di- memudahkan, janganlah kita jadi orang Oh tak boleh, you kena uh, go through ni, you kena ni. Kadang-kadang benda tu proses saja. 
it's just uh, SOP masa kita buat um, CITF, vaccination pick tu. Kalau nak ikut proses, ini tak boleh, itu tak boleh. We said, what is it that we can do to make it boleh? Yeah. So, to me, these are uh, the uh, elements of leaders. Leaders need, people always say, leaders is power. I don't see leaders as dengan power. Leaders is for us to serve the people. Misalnya kalau kita makan buffet, leaders should not be the one yang ambil buffet memula tu. It should be yang last kali, nanti apa yang tinggal atas uh, bekas tu, that is yours. That is leaders. <laughs> kalau you kalau you you kata, saya leaders, I want to be the first makan. Uh, I don't think that is leaders. You are demanding their respect. Respect cannot be uh, demanded. Eh? Respect can only be earned. Uh, hmm. Itu saya punya pandangan lah ya. Eh? <laughs> Terima kasih Dato. Eh? Okey, kita ada sat, uh, kita ada satu audien uh, 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 yang bertanya ni Dato ya. Eh? Mungkin ini the last uh, question daripada audien lah ya. Eh? Saya nak raikan di sini uh, uh, kita punya soalan dari pesara. <laughs> pesara SK Dato. Okey, daripada Prof Dr Muhammad Ismail. Okey. Uh, dia bertanya uh, sebagai seorang pesara uh, sebab Datuk dah, dah bersara ya yeah? uh, baru je bersara beberapa hari Datuk ya yeah? bersara uh, secara rasmi lah kan yeah. <laughs> apakah perancangan Datuk untuk mengisi masa lapang <laughs> itu je soalan <laughs> I, uh, those who know me quite well they know that I'm I'm uh sort of like half freak a bit so i i go for a walk uh like today I managed to do i think four or three kilometer so in the morning i will do that other than that i would like to give back to the society uh, sebenarnya saya seperti uh, dr jamal sebutkan saya dilahirkan di selangor tanjung karang anak seorang petani i wouldn't have thought i'll be here uh, I I managed to go abroad. I managed to work abroad. I got scholarship and I got a job in in UTM. I think these these are what the society has been supporting me, and I would like to give back to the society in any way that I can. Uh, dari segi CSR ataupun uh, my passion is still uh, students uh, dan juga higher education. So I will start. Uh, working on that but uh dr jamal can i share some of the uh, uh, answer some of this question yeah misalnya yeah. Yeah. dr yeah. rosetta uh, i know her uh kata, what is the best way to manage an innovation portfolio especially for us as women leader in rdci such as to uh, technopreneur yeah. Dr. Rosita, uh, don't give up, continue to pursue because we know KFC tu berapa kali they got to where they are. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, for us, uh, saya, uh, when I look at those proposal, uh, proposal daripada universities, uh, banyak yang punya point-point yang valuable. Tapi bila present tu, dia tidak kesampaian. Dia present tu, dia present apa yang yang dia tahu dia nak beritahu pada mereka but dia tak cuba present apa panel nak that's why tadi empathy tu is important so we have to see apa yang panel nak lihat sebenarnya apa objektif panel so in that way yeah, uh, you can probably get your grant that you want and banyak perkara yang panel tak dapat memahami apa yang ingin diketengahkan so that is saya rasa uh, don't don't give up, uh, continue uh, dan uh, if you need any advice, I can give my advice. Uh, in fact, saya pun last week dah pencen pun dengar uh, dia presentation sebab apa yang mereka nak buat tu memang bagus, saya setuju. Tapi cara-cara uh, angle angle yang digunakan. Eh? Itu Rosetta kemudian uh, next ke at, kejap eh, saya ada tengok beberapa yang yang One lecturer tanya, uh, as a young lecturer, uh, dia kata bagaimana dia nak, uh, bagaimana dia nak balance kan, eh? subject administrative, how do we balance that? It's about time management. Everybody has 24 hours uh, in a day. Yeah? Yeah. 
24 hours in a day. And teaching alone is not our job. We have to do research. Admin is good. You may find admin tedious. You may find, eh, menyusah. And I used to say dulu, eh, senang lagi jaga bisin daripada orang. I, I found that. <laughs> But along the way, I found the right balance. Uh, you have to do the admin because the admin is the one that is going to groom you to become a leader. That is where your communication, your engagement, your negotiation, and sometimes you have to negotiate. Can you imagine, even though we are Kementerian Science, tetapi masa nak dapat vaksin tu, YBKJ, my deputy, Dr. Azman, they both negotiate with the vaccine companies. And this is very important. If you have time, go for negotiation uh, uh, course or read negotiation book. I'm still finding my way in negotiation. Kadang-kadang, uh, tak boleh kata tak boleh, eh? but sometimes uh, in our daily life, especially, I have also uh, people saying, oh, macam mana? It's, the, the situation is very hard. Orang ni nak ni, ni, ni. But sometimes we have to, seperti saya sebutkan tadi, Uh, don't raise your voice, uh, raise your words. Yeah, so, kadang uh, my fam famous quote among my friends, macam tarik benang dalam tepung. Benang jangan putus, tepung jangan berterabu. Jadi uh, all the best to uh, MKI. I think you can balance it, balance it with your your life, yeah? uh, your children, your family. Uh, we have 24 hours in a day and read books on how successful people, especially macam seven effective habits, dia ceritakan, for example, uh, smart and successful people tak pergi bank masa tengah bulan, uh, masa pem, akhir bulan. Sebab akhir bulan orang ramai, dia akan pergi masa pertengahan bulan masa orang tak ada. So that is one example of balancing. <laughs> right. Oh, terima kasih Dato'. Ya, yeah, um, terima kasih. Pro Latif, Pro Latif ada tanya. Being leaders, oh, berarti ada. Ada masuk eh? Apa? Yeah. Do you ever make a mistake, decision, and how to deal with it, if any? Yes, okay. I, I make many, many mistakes along the way, and sometimes I have to admit it. Yeah, but even when, uh, for uh, I, the example was when uh, kita ingatkan uh, bukan warga negara dah dapat vaksinasi di di Selangor tetapi rupanya yang kita vaksinin orang dari Johor, dari Pahang, dari Penang. Then uh, when people were making a lot of noise uh, and it was in the media and bosses to text me. Uh, I make a mistake uh, and probably I don't look at it as a mistake lah uh, Dr. Latif. But it's a feedback. As I mentioned earlier on, ada slide saya tu kan. I don't look at it as a mistake. I am a human, so I'm I'm just a human being. Uh, saya buat ni tak jadi, so saya rasa okay kita betulkan. And then masa YB tu uh, attack saya, YB my minister lo. Uh, so what are you going to do? I said uh, masa tu transition ya. Yeah? I said uh, kita bagi appointments lah kepada mereka supaya kita boleh buat teratur. And we did. And many other things uh, along the way uh, that uh, that. Uh, I wouldn't say mistake lah. It's something that kita, sometimes we don't have enough data and sometimes it's not your fault. But uh, we cannot blame other people. We have to earn, uh, own it. So I own it and betulkan saja. Thank you. Okay, Itu saja yang saya tahu soalan ya, Dr. Jamal. Tak ada soalan okay, lain lagi. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Uh, okay. Baik. Uh, we are now at the end of our conversation. Uh, uh, Sebelum kita akhiri uh, sesi kita ni, uh, saya rasa uh, perlu sesuatu daripada Datuk lain tu. Okay. What is the uh, What is the last word Datuk can give us to all of us? What is the last word from Datuk for us? <laughs> uh, ya ini dalam maksud dia yang akan saya tinggalkan. <laughs> okay tak. As a book by Hamka. Habis itu, hidup untuk apa? <laughs> and okay. I think each and everyone will have to find their own path, their own journey. Okay. Um, we should not be judgmental. We All should right. be inclusive regardless of background, race, uh, religion. 
because uh, Malaysia is going to become a developed nation one day and each and every one of us should play important role in that uh, journey. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dato. That is very deep, very deep. Yeah. So everybody, inshallah, will take it as a... Uh, okay, to all of the viewers and audience, uh, we kindly appreciate your presence and questions. Uh, the sharing session has become to an end for SKA Leaders Series 10 today with Dato I, uh, Siti Hamisa. Okay. We would like to thank uh, Dato IR Professor Dr. Siti Hamisa Binti Tafsir for the memorable session. Uh, may Dato be blessed with a healthy life, with your family, and in carry out her duties. Okay, I think uh, Datuk still have a duties, right? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, at, least, uh, at least, at least, eh, with the society and the uh, M board. Eh? So, yeah. many of us actually involved with uh, uh, or commit with the M board. Eh? And Datuk is a president of M board. Okay. And uh, thank you to all the behind the scenes lines of SK leaders. Uh, actually, they are all uh, hardworking eh, to ensure that this session is uh, successful. Uh, I thought, all right, I, I, I like to uh, list down uh, and uh, highlight here, uh, especially to uh, our chairman and JKP SKA, Professor Dr. Nor Hazilan Mano, uh, former associate chair of uh, research and academic staff. Akras SKA, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ismail, uh, now retired already. Okay. Associate Chair Akras SKA, Professor Dr. Khalida Binti Muda, uh, Team Akras SKA, Noshima, Nor Izzat Liliati, and then we have a team section Jimaira, Dr. Ain Nadia, Dr. Afika, uh, Dr. Zuhaili, Dr. Irwan Hafizi, Dr. Zohanif. Dr. Amirul, Dr. Zuhaili, Dr. Nur Nabila, Dr. Ahmad Razin, Prof. Azman, Prof. Sobri, okay, Team ITSKA, Suhaimi, Kamal, and also all Faculty of Engineering uh, team members. Uh, so thank you very much eh, to support and to ensure that our session is successful today. Uh, and all of the team members that is helping us to make this event successful. Inshallah, our program will continue for SK Leaders in the 11 series. Uh, I would like to apologize uh, for all the technical errors while handling this ceremony. Let's together uh, cekal bersama uh, taqwa eh, with UTM. Take care of yourself and your family. Together we are fight from COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you. SKA awesome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and thank you.